All right, so in this video, I'm gonna break down my draft deck that I drafted earlier this week. I went one win, two losses with this deck, which isn't obviously anything impressive, but it was a lot of fun to play with and I definitely learned some things. And before I deconstruct it, I just wanna go through again what I learned. So, one at a time. All right, what do we have here? Baird, our Givian Recruiter, one in a that's red and white, legendary creature, human soldier. At the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with power greater than space power, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. So I was able to find a synergy with this card with another card in here that was able to self-buff, um, and that was just able to buy me some time. Um, so this card I, I did enjoy, and you know, I was in Boros, so I was red and white, so this was helpful. Um, so yeah, that's what I had to say about that card. Impulse. This hard to help. I, I enjoy this card to help me get through my deck, especially as a, uh, a spell burn type of approach. Just trying to get through spells and get into my deck to get access to more spells. So I like this card. Um, it does sort of force your hand in the sense that if you are, you know, if this this deck ran haughty Jin, so, Jin, so it, I don't know if you say the D or not. Is it silent D? Who knows? And. Basically, if I pull four cards, Haughty Jin is in there. I got, I have to take that. So, you know, it could tie your hands in some situations, but for the most part, I liked it for the options it created. Talus Lookout. So I picked this card because I thought I would compliment Haughty Jin. Um, and I gotta say, it was okay. When it dies, you look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them on into your hand and the other into your graveyard. That was, you know, sim I mean, you know, a, kind of like a low-level impulse, right? Except these are going to your graveyard. So I didn't really have many graveyard synergies in this deck. So this, you could get a two-for-one if you do play that way. You get a card in your hand. You get a you spell. Actually, you know what? I did play that. I Haughty Jin. Haughty Jin. We're just going to call it Haughty Jin. Haughty Jin was uh needing instance in the graveyard in order to have bump up its power so this would actually sync well with that or you would want to use those instants usually though so that's the thing um anyway unimpressed it costs a lot for what you get you know four four mana for three two flyer I, I i guess the weak toughness flyers i guess i understand you need to balance the fact that they're flying but i was just not very impressed with that card to be honest all right, next, Essence Scatter. Okay, this card was so fun. Um, obviously, this card is uh, a ton of fun to play in blue in the sense that when people are putting down their bomb characters, creatures, you can send them right back to their hand. Uh, excuse me, to the graveyard, I have to remember. So I synergized this with Tolarian Geyser, which I probably had three in here, and that worked really well when... I would send a card back to their hand. Their next turn, they try to put it out. But now that I had this in my hand, I was able to get rid of that card completely. So that worked very nicely together. Speak of the Devil, Tolarian Guys. Like I said, I'm running about three in here. Um, this card is a great card. This is able to put return. So let's let's actually talk about the cards, right? Let's practice that. Tolarian Guys. There, two and a blue, sorcery, kicker white. Return target creature card to its owner's hand. Draw a card. If this spell was kicked, you gain three life. So I love that this is, you know, a three for one. You you take a threat off the battlefield, you're drawing, and you're getting a little bit of life gain for the little bit of kicker. And, you know, I was running, I'm pretty sure it was splashed red, so it was blue, white as my mains, my main colors. And uh, the hitting the kicker on this mid to late game was really, really easy. Loved getting that card whenever we drew it. Mesa Cavalier. So the annoying thing about this card was, you know, you would think that as a flyer, you know, you might be able to sneak in, you know, two points of damage every every combat phase, but there was always a flyer on their team, and it was a cheap flyer. I mean, the number of times I ran into that uh, one-drop black death swarm fly thing where you could pay another black and black mana and get it as death touch basically you know trading for that put me down two mana in that exchange i didn't really like that this card did not do as well as i wanted 
runic shot so this was uh this was just my last ditch effort at getting some removal it kind of sucks that it's sorcery speed um it, it's not a big deal because it does only cost one white mana you can kick it and you get a scry two on that and again this was easy to kick being that i was in white and blue so i i was happy i ran this um i honestly didn't get get to see much play i was only able to use it once but that once was enough for me to appreciate that card runic shot Next, take up the shield. This is one that I didn't get to use at the recent draft, but I had used it at another draft. And it is a nice little combat trick. So it's one and a white, it's an instant. You put a 1 1 counter on target creature. It gains lifelink and indestructible until end of turn. Uh, that, that was a nice surprise for those creatures that, you know, maybe low stats on the power and toughness but they were doing something for you and you'd send them into attack and you know, get blocked it it is nice in that sense um it didn't get much play so i'm still formulating my opinion on uh take up the shield next card is phyrexian espionage so that is two and a blue it's a sorcery kicker of one in black uh, draw two cards and then if you kick it your opponent discards a card i think the well black was off color for this deck for me so i never kicked this i don't really know you know if i would kick it too often um this card was nice again to help me get deeper into the deck uh i you know hogging up two and a blue as far as mana goes it would typically be in situations where i don't have anything to do but it would set me up well for at least you know Having something going into their turn as far as like a counter or having something to play on my next turn. So I, I would put this card in again. I had three initially. I did end up having to take some out because it did feel heavy. Uh, Impulse, we talked about that one. So I was running at least two. Twinferno. So I never got to play this card. And it seems, it seems like, let's see. I mean, so it's one and a red. It's an instant. Choose one when you can when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn copy that spell you may choose new targets for the copy target creature you control gains double strike until end of turn mm, so i guess that could be a really good finisher i mean especially in, in haughty in this deck where you know i can get haughty jin power up pretty quick with the cheap spells and then putting this on it you know not only does the spell in the graveyard add to the power but if i did the double strike you know that would be great but I didn't get to see it play out, so I can't really speak to, you know, was it good? I don't know. It seems situational, um, but I would like to try it. Lightning Strike, one in a red, deals three damage to any target. So this card, um, I've just been hearing that this card is a great pickup. I didn't. I think I did get to use it once, and that did feel good. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward card, just needing a good balance of removal. And that any target on Lightning Strike help. Argivian Cavalier. So two and a white for a creature Orc Knight. So this comes with Enlist. And when Argivian Cavalier enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 white soldier creature token. So this was nice for building up my side real quick. And then clearly, and then obviously you can enlist that 1-1 one, one in the next turn to bump this up a bit. That is nice. Um, I this did help me last a little longer um you know nothing major but if you're creature heavy and you need to build up or if you're token approach that is a good card another phyrexian espionage talked about that one i was running at least two like i said here we go so here is the bomb so to speak uh my key card in this draft so haughty Dijin. one and two blue creature to Jin, so i think that's like a genie i don't know i'm really guessing here flying and its power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard and also it discounts instant and sorceries one generic mana less in order to cast so this card was great obviously whenever it came out onto the battlefield it was immediately targeted so i didn't get to see much i mean at most i think i was able to get two attacks in before my opponent was able to get a response for this card in um a lot of fun to just you know i was able to i played it anywhere from having no spells in the graveyard and just putting it out as a zero four blocker 
and then having it slowly build up, taking away some damage in the air, increasing the pressure on my opponents to address it. All the way up to I was able to have it at 5-4, dealing 5-4 in the air, and you know, opponents are conceding at that because if they don't have any response in the clear future, let's get it into the next game. All right, Pixie Illusionist. This is a blue mana. Creature, fairy, wizard. I did not notice that it's spelled that way as far as fairy goes. So kicker on this is pretty big. So it's three and a green, and this is flying, obviously. If Pixie Illusionist was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two one plus one counters on it. Plus one, plus one counters on it. Uh, tap, target land you control, becomes a basic land type of your choice until end of turn. So this is nice in theory for mana fixing if you have a deck that you think you might need that. And I was just worried here going across three different colors. I didn't have too many dual lands. So I thought, you know, let's put it in for the flying, evasion, and mana fixing if needed. Honestly, this card was a little disappointing. Maybe it was just the situations that it came up. I think I had top decked it and I was not in a situation where this is what I wanted and it never really filled out those other situations that I was hoping to use it for. I'm just chipping away in the air if my opponent didn't have anything with flying or reach, or fixing my mana if I needed it. I actually did fine with my mana um, at that draft. Runic Shot, we talked about that one. Protect the Negotiator. So this was a little bit of a variant on the other counter negate. Um, Actually, I take that back. This is a more generalized counter, so it's one and a blue. You can kick it for white. If this spell was kicked, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token. Counter target spell unless its controller pays one for each creature you control. This card, I, I like this card for the most part. It was a little situational in the sense that if I didn't have any creatures, then basically my opponent is just going to counter it and... Basically, I'm only playing it in that situation if I kicked it because I'm thinking I would get the soldier creature token. Um, I would pick this up again just because I did enjoy running a lot of counters in this deck. Academy Wall. I really enjoyed this, and I think this is an underrated card in my opinion, but maybe I just enjoy the effect. So let's go. Let's read into it. So this is two and a blue. It's a wall. It has a defender. When you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So that was pretty cool because basically this deck had a lot of card drawing power, and that's was something I heard about this deck as I was playing against people, and that their impressions of it was just my ability to card draw. Academy Wall definitely played into that. I love the synergy it created as far as getting in to the deck through all the instants and sorceries. Next up, Furious Bellow. One in a red, it's an instant. Target creature gets a plus three, plus zero, and gains first strike until end of turn. Scry one. So I actually play this card in my standard deck, and I really like it as a uh, combat trick. Um, I did not... I might have put this on Haughty Jin as a way to sneak in some more damage in the air when they didn't have a response to it. Um, I like this card. The Scry one's a nice add-on. I don't know... If you really need pump spells, I really enjoy them. Gives you some options as far as combat tricks go. Essence Scatter, we talked about that one. Had at least two in this deck. Negate, I uh, I think I used Negate once. and It was nice, you know, taking the discount from Haughty Jin, being able to spend, put in these spells for just the one blue mana. That was nice. So, again, really enjoyed counters in this deck. That was a lot of fun to play it that way. Knights of Dawn, Knight of Dawn's Light, a one and a white, creature, human knight. It's an uncommon. First strike, you, if you would gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead, and then I can pump this creature. So this was the creature that synchronized well with our red-white guy here. So I was in a situation where I had these two cards out, and I was just able to pump this guy, and in my end turn, because this was pumped, this guy triggered, got another 1-1. One, one. I was basically stalling, and it did pay off to stall until I was able to get a better uh, better draw. So I did like that. Um, it is a, I do like, uh, I, I, I like it, I like it. I would, I would draft it again. Phyrexian Espionage, we talked about that. All right, one of the dual lands, so I got a white and a blue. I had one white and blue dual land at the Tolarian Geyser, we talked about. 
All right, Balmor, Battle Mage Captain. So this is blue and red, and it's a legendary creature, bird wizard. It's flying. It says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, creatures you control get a plus one, plus zero, and gain trample until end of turn. So I, I put this creature out maybe like once, but it was responded to fairly quickly. I think I just didn't get uh, lucky enough to be able to play this. Um, this synchronized very well with the sense that I was running a Flyers instant sorcery spell deck. Um, you know, with the fact that it only went to end turn is fine because, um, you know, I was already feeling like I had a lot of synergy with the other instants and sorceries, but I enjoyed that. All right, Goblin Picker. Just this point, just trying to fill out my deck with other things to help me get into my deck should I need it if I was in a situation of um, not having the cards I need in hand. Um, didn't use it in that way. Didn't really use it at all, I think. Um, but that's why I included it. I, not a strong pick, but, you know, he was there. And the Thrill of Possibility, final card, one in a red, instant, as an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card, draw two cards. So that card did enjoy this as far as getting into my deck, especially when Haughty Jin was out. Man, that I cannot explain how fun that was when I could just spend one red mana, get two cards, and ooh, that was fun. So that was my recent draft, and uh, I hope you enjoyed hearing or watching this little round out. Now I'm going to take these out of the sleeves and see if we can add anything to our standard decks, all right? Thanks for watching.